Legion, Season 2, Episode... Sir. Yes, Season 2, Episode 1. Thoughts. This episode is called Chapter 9. I'm already confused. I barely started the video, and the show's already got me all messed up. Yes, another episode I love. Spoilers for everything X Men leading up to and including this episode. The episode is rated TVMA, so will this video be? Let's dive right in. So, yeah, just like the season opener for the first season, and and I think also other episodes of the first season. Yeah, the very first image is like we can we can kind of say okay, there's definitely there's something, but we're we're struggling to to piece together exactly what what it is we're looking at, and we see that it's. The you know it's it's Lenny and Oliver, you know in a in a pool, and you know the the she asks, I think it's something like is it Wednesday? It's Wednesday, right? That's a question about time. I don't like questions about time. And then you know it's like we're trapped, and and the you know it zooms out and zooms out again of the you know yeah just really really what's the word yeah I I love how the show messes with your head I I don't really understand yet what it is that the because they looked perfectly free at the end of season one but I guess maybe it's because they haven't found Farouk's physical body yet and let's see. yeah and then we get the recurring motif of the chattering teeth which just yeah so creepy that's you know Teeth aren't supposed to, to do that. And one of the first we see, it's actually like maybe a couple dozen people all chattering their teeth. So it's, yeah, really, really disturbing to, to look at. Not to mention, listen to. And let's see. The, um, I don't like it when you do that. What? I'm practicing. Yeah, that's a so so Sid swapped minds with the cat, which is why she's like licking her hand and petting the cat because this is one of those times you never know with cats, but this is one of those times where the cat does want to be petted. Just yeah. I don't blame her for practicing. I don't blame Carrie with a K for finding it very creepy. And let's see. Yeah, and then we meet the Vermilion and Admiral Fukuyama. And I did a little bit of research, and apparently, like, some people have interpreted it as transphobic, which is, of course, terrible. You know, that's. Yeah. Um. Some have interpreted it as as not be as as actually being transpositive, because it is this thing you know the Vermilion have fairly feminine faces and and they are looking at the cast list they're played by you know as as far as I can tell cis women the the um, women at least I I don't know if they're cis or, or trans um, but yeah you know they they have each each of them has this little mustache. And that's the thing. Like, if they were presented as uh, in a in a negative light, then it would be transphobic. But the and and you know, for for some you know some some trans women who badly want to pass, the image can be triggering. You know, um, it can trigger their gender dysphoria. But for others, it it is a a you know yeah for for some it's it's just you know and and it is there's there's not actually anything wrong with it. if if that is what you want to look like you know sure the um so so yeah it's because it does kind of it their their appearance 
sort of blurs the line, you know, across the gender binary of gender expression. So, yeah, um, I I feel terrible for the the people that you know consider it transphobic. I I'm not the right person to say if it is or not, but I am very glad that it was apparently able to make some people feel seen. And it is, uh, you know, it, it definitely, it, it feels more like a neutral to me. Because if, like, hypothetically, let's say that they wanted to, to make it, you know, if it was supposed to be, like, very transphobic, you know, one of the things that I sometimes point to is there's a, there's a scene in Dude, Where's My Car? you know, released at a time when there was very intense transphobia in, in a number of American comedies, you know, and yeah, the, that movie features a scene where a trans man and a trans woman, both of whom are intentionally depicted as very much not passing, the, the trans woman is very masculine, the trans man is very feminine. And essentially, you know, yeah, you're, you're, the, the trans woman, you know, yeah, kisses the, the trans man, and the trans man has the appearance of basically a cis woman, but with a mustache. And they're, they're kissing, and it's kind of exaggerated, and then it cuts to the two protagonists, who we spend the entire movie with, and, and a lot of, you know, we, we see things through their point of view. I'm not saying that we always agree with everything they say and do, but here we're clearly meant to, and they're, like, practically dry heaving, vomiting, you know, they're, they're completely disgusted, which, you know, after the, the movie The Crying Game, there was a while where if a trans person appeared, they would all, there would all would be a cis man, like, vomiting or just about to vomit, you know, I, I, I believe, I want to say, was it Needs More Gay who did a really great video on, uh, my, maybe I'm thinking of a different YouTuber, or maybe it's just, maybe it's called something else, but, but certainly, yeah, the, the, You know, if, um, an LGBT YouTuber made a video pointing out the crying game isn't as transphobic as these later movies. Basically, these later movies just kind of saw that and thought, oh, okay, so if a, if a cis man has sex with a trans woman and realizes afterwards that she's trans, he vomits, and that's you know that was the one thing they they took from. I haven't watched it. I I would like to. Uh, you know, I I hear it's a little bit of a mixed bag, but I you know I'd like to. Yeah, try to unpack it as best I can. But but yeah, you know the the that's a very overt kind of transphobia, where here like essentially. Nobody really acts like there's anything particularly wrong with their vermilion. You know, the, the one thing we have is like David says, were there women with mustaches? You know, and, and like, you know, David says a lot of things that we're not supposed to think, oh, that's how you should behave. You know, he's he can be a little bit snarky and un unpleasant sometimes. So, yeah, I, I think they were intending for it to be neutral or even transpositive. I don't think it was intending transphobia, which does, of course, sadly not mean that it can't be transphobic. Now, let's see. Yeah, I like it. So, so Carrie with a C, you know, takes off the helmet and, and you know, everyone around them like, panics and there's a, you know, points the guns, with the laser sights, and, and Carrie with a C is like, Carrie, and she you know gets out. Come on, boys! You know, just yeah, very cool. A again, I just I love how eager she is. Like, this is a very dangerous situation, and she's like, you know, 
ice cream man, you know, just excited. Just a kid on Christmas, you know, kid in a candy store kind of face. Just love it. David, say something. I would have loved if he literally did say something. But he did say, can I have some waffles? That sure is something. And I love that they're like, It's not that someone comes over with a tray with waffles. The waffles sail past in the water. And before we see that that's what's going on, we just see the water. And then, like, a boat comes in. And there's waffles on top of it. And it's like, what am I... You know, I love when the show has me going, what am I watching? What is this? Like, what even... Just... Yeah. And... Yeah, and, and, you know, we get a clear explanation of the divisions, and we're told that now the people of Summerland are working with the division, which there is a certain logic to, you know, the, the problem in, you know, in season one, the problem that there was, was that they were paranoid, they thought, you know, the divisions were, they thought that all mutants were dangerous, and so they basically went all, you know, fascist state on them, but... Yeah, you know, hypothetically, you know, if they were to be convinced that that isn't the case, that, you know, I, th I think it's Tony Wallace who says, you know, most of us are harmless, you know. So, yeah, they, they could end up working together and together fight the minority of, of evil mutants, which in real life is reminiscent of how, you know, this is going to blow some transphobes' minds and some homophobes and such, the the LGBTQ plus community are actually very effective in policing their own. It's you know often there's, there's there can be a problem with them not being listened to by people who can do more direct you know. But the you know there there are a number of of people, for example, right here on YouTube who call out LGBTQ plus people who you know the the small minority who actually are for example groomers and, and rapists and such you know so yeah it is very logical you know and it it's one of those things you know when something comes up in season two of a show you know i like to try to say you know, would it have made sense for that to be in season one and i don't think so i think season one it was this very alienating feeling of you know like we literally at the start of the show david doesn't even know he's a mutant he thinks you know, it, ultimately, he does seemingly have some mental illnesses, or at least one, but at the start of the show, he thinks that's the explanation for everything, you know, and over the course of the season, we realize, no, he's definitely a mutant, some of this stuff, 100% he's a mutant, and, and yeah, you know, once you've come to that realization, it's, it's that thing of, you know, once, once you realize, this is part of my identity, what next? You know, there's there's so many stories where it's like, oh, well, you know, there, um, ah, crap, what was her name? There was this excellent, um, ah, maybe, maybe I'll, uh, oh, wait, was it? That's right, yes, uh, uh, Rowan Ellis, excellent uh, YouTuber, and the, the, let's see... It was, yeah, uh, um, she has this video called The Tedious Repetition of Coming Out Movies, where she points out, you know, a lot of these, you know, a lot a lot of media treats it as the, the be-all, end-all. That's, you know, once you reach that, that's it. That's the conclusion of the story. And in reality, that isn't, you know, am among other things, well, it, it's also, you know, people who do come out don't come out just the one time. But... Yeah, you know, once you've come out, you you then figure out what you know. It's it's not a bad thing, but it it is only the start. It's not the end point. And yeah, you know, that's what we're seeing here. Season one was coming to terms with, you know, David coming to terms with his identity as mutant, and season two is, you know, what do you do now? And I do appreciate there is this, like he, you know, it would be, like. It wouldn't be much of a conflict if it was already resolved by the start. So the conflict is, does he fully trust them? Because we, you know, we're, we're seeing this, like he keeps, you know, he's clearly hiding some things. 
and he'll talk to a character that he at least has before trusted somewhat, and, you know, the, the, will hear two voices in his head arguing over whether or not to tell the truth. So, yeah, you know, the, the struggle of what to do next once you've realized your identity is going to be at least one of the, the arcs and storylines in this season. And, let's see... Yeah, and we have the thing, you know, what do you remember? And he, he does lie about some of it, and, you know, yeah, of course it's Tonami asking him this question because he can literally sense memories. And that's, you know, later he confirms, I could definitely sense some memories in there, but there's, you know, there's something he's hiding. And we're told that one of the symptoms of the, the psychological, the, the ah, what, what do they call it? Crap, it had a name, but I already, uh, yeah, um, yeah, there's, there's so many different things to keep track of in the show, but yeah, the psychological, you know, they, they realize it's not a literal physical virus, but it's psychological, you know, the, the, the symptoms of that, and one of them is malaise, and that's also, again, just such a nice, creepy, you know, we, we've, that, we've seen Summerlin, we've seen the, 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 um, yeah, the mental institution and such, now we're seeing the, you know, one of the division headquarters, and, yeah, because they're, they're, you know, they're on high alert about this, this psychological virus, and so they're, you know, yeah, the, the, over the PA, we hear the, the symptoms and reminders of, you know, be careful of ideas that aren't your own. Which is also just a wonderful sentence in, in general of like, you know, because that, that's a pretty good way to describe paranoia, you know, and the, of course they're paranoid. The, you know, we've seen the chattering teeth, you know, but beware of ideas that are not your own because uh, obviously in the context of the show of the you know they're saying if you find yourself thinking something and you feel like I didn't used to think that it might be this virus but in reality you know be careful of ideas that aren't your own With, without listening to ideas that are not your own there's no progress you know so I, I really appreciate they haven't taken the teeth out of the division it's just seemingly they're the good guys now, but, you know, they've done some pretty terrible things in Season 1. And... Let's see... Yeah, very sweet when Sid and David get back together, and, you know, she explains, for th almost a year, 362 days, we thought you were dead. And they, of course, have sex. It's, you know, it's a very logical, after being apart for so long, they, they miss each other. And, let's see, then we have the, um, Sid, Sid, Sid. So, I was, there was like a couple of seconds there where I was thinking, does, does Melanie speak exclusively in words that start with the letter S now? And 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 yeah, you know, she is she's devastated. You know, she she lost Oliver after having him back just briefly. And you know, she talks about control and you know feeling guilty over wanting to be able to be with someone who has a calling to save the world, you know, expressing part of the experience of women here in the West of, like, you know, yeah, feeling feeling guilty over wanting something that, that you know, on, that they can make an argument over, well, you know, I can appreciate why I can't have this. And... Yeah, and the 
you know, she says, vacant lot are the saddest words in the English language. And what did I write? Oh, right, right. The, yeah, they talk about, you know, the tank will, will help. And yeah, and we get that, that, you know, the thing about, you know, was he a, a man dreaming he was a butterfly, or was he a butterfly who dreamt he was a man? And, yeah, you know, it it, it is such a great, it, it does really illustrate, this is not the first time I've come across it. Um, there's a, among other places I found it in, there's this Matrix comic series where, yeah, it's also... And, and yeah, this thing of, was it Al, A. Albert or Albert A., something like that, you know, he stumbled and then he got the idea in his head that his leg was not his own. He, sta you know, he stabs it on the bus, he tries to saw it off, and, and yeah, you know, the, the, they, there's this description that, you know, at first, you can't tell that the idea is bad, and that for a delusion to take hold, you have to abandon rational alternatives. And it's, yeah, that's a very accurate, you know, when when you read about people who have delusions, yeah, that is something you, you take away from, from reading the details. And let's see. I like the thing of maybe Lucifer was just a guy who, who was it who stole some kids' lunch money, and over time it became yeah, and and yeah, uh, Clark is is saying you know I know you're lying, and and this thing of you know watching soap opera and eating ice cream as a sort of drinking game whenever there was some ridiculous thing. And uh, let's see, what did I write? Right, the yeah, we learn about you know Amal has to get back to, or is is seeking to get back to his body in order to be more powerful. And I I like the the Carrie's arguing, you know, the Carrie with the C's like, please, you know, and you make people uncomfortable. We talked about this and Carrie with the case like. I make people uncomfortable. You walked around without pants. You know, just, yeah. And I really appreciate they did it in camera. Like, the camera pans away from the carries onto David and then pans back. And, you know, in reality, you know, Amber Mithunder, who plays Carrie Loudermilk, you know, she walked away whilst the camera was off her. And the, the little bit of sound design sells that she was absorbed back into carry with a C's body and let's see um, yeah and we yeah David goes into the the tank and we get another dance sequence um, I'm not I don't really know I'm, I'm sure there's something but I'm not sure what exactly to in interpret from and I'm not good at interpreting dance, but yeah, um, there's definitely something. And um, let's see, yeah, then we have the thing of the uh, let's see. Um, yeah, then we we meet. Sid from the future who draws instead of talks and you know she's missing an arm and you know I so, yeah so she you know she indicates David and then she you know gift you have a gift for me no present I'm in the present I'm good at this and and you know the 
she communicates to David that he should help the Shadow King find Amal Farouk's physical body, which is fascinating. That is very... Yeah, and, and, you know, the other characters do talk about maybe the Shadow King does still have some hold over him. Maybe the Shadow King is toying with his perception. That's kind of the Shadow King's entire deal in Season 1, is is messing with David's perception to, to you know, yeah, out of self-interest. So, yeah, I, I don't know. And, and at the same time, it is this thing of, you know, it's maybe there is some... You know, it's not impossible that it is part of the solution. So, so yeah, really appreciate that bit of... I'm, I'm really looking forward to seeing that play out over the rest of the season. Doing it live. And, yeah, just fantastic season opener. Really... Yeah, I'm, I'm glad that it doesn't feel like they're, you know, some, sometimes you get to season two of a show and it's like, oh, wow, they kind of ran out of ideas in, in season one. Let's see. Oh, <laughs> okay, so, yes, on to IMDb trivia. At the beginning of the episode, Lenny asks Oliver, it's Tuesday, right? Which is actually a meta joke because episodes of Legion air on Tuesdays. The show uses primary colors that are predominantly found in comic books to show vivid contrasts. The shots are staged similar to comic book design. And... Let's see... 